Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Matchbook series on the EBPL podcast. My name is Paul. I'm a librarian here at EBPL, and this is season six, episode one. If you've never joined us before on the Matchbook podcast, what we do is we try to dish out specific book recommendations, suggestions based on your interests, based on a variety of interests. We go in all different directions. Sometimes we do nonfiction. Sometimes we'll do fiction, we've done poetry, history. The podcast emerged out of a form on our website. If you're on our homepage, you can hover over the Explore tab, and then you'll see the adult reading subheading, and it'll say EBPL Matchbook. If you'd like, you can fill out that form, and basically it'll do something similar to what we're doing on the podcast, where say you have a very niche, specific interest. What I'll do is I'll try to comb through the best of the titles in that area and try to find what best suits uh, your interest. So uh, this being season six already, normally we'll just kind of take questions and then I will give out book recommendations and then talk about them a little bit. But, you know, season six of anything, any show in any medium of culture what you do is you know you do something a little different so i had a question on the form on our website i think it was something about like american history and normally somebody will just write back hey thanks for the recommendations whatever or they just won't write back at all which i'm fine with too but one person wrote back and they said hey where do you find all these i guess they didn't know the books that i was recommending they didn't, weren't aware of them beforehand so they were like where do you find these to then send to people. I was like, that's a really good question because it goes in a lot of different directions and it's not always one place where I'm looking because I might strike out somewhere and I have to move on to another place. So I figured why not say where I look in all of these different areas to try to find books to then pass on to the readers and listeners. So. I'd start with something as simple as just browsing a bookshelf, which I still like to do just because I, I don't know, I, I think some covers really catch my eye still. And when I see that, I'm intrigued. I want to learn more. I want to read the dust jacket. I want to read the blurbs on the back. So while a lot of them, even if they are really cool book covers, can be misleading, I find it helps to be like, wow, it almost is matching the art style that you like and saying, hey, if you already like this art style, maybe you'll like the book as well. I think there is some sort of correlation. It's probably pretty loose, but it is a fun way to find books that if you're just at the library or even in bookstores, because bookstores do a really good job of face out book covers, not putting too many books on the shelf, letting you see everything. They'll have them neatly laid out on stands and everything. It's just a classic way to find something you might be interested in. And even then, when I look at the blurbs, the blurbs are basically just little cheery items about the book. And I don't care so much about that as to who is writing the blurb. Say it's they've decided to get some of my favorite authors to blurb this book. It's like, well, if they did that, then maybe it means I also like this book. I'm looking for who put the blurb on the back and why the publisher got in touch with this other author to put it there. That's kind of my mindset when I'm looking through things. I don't know if that entirely makes sense, but that's how I approach it. Another tool I like to use is fivebooks.com, F-I-V-E books.com. It's a website where there's interviews conducted with authors and they basically say, their five favorite books in that area. So because I recommend things in so many different areas, this is a really good tool because it has fiction and nonfiction, and then even it breaks down the fiction into sci-fi, fantasy, mystery, and even the nonfiction. They they have so many subcategories in the nonfiction, so they really go in a lot of different areas. But some of the people are like experts. They really do get some great interviews in here. So just to use an example of a recent one, it was the best detective fiction. And then it's an interview with Jeffrey Archer recommending five of his favorite detective fiction novels. So within that, he's 
recommending them, but he's also saying why he thinks they're so great. And also in the interview, you get to the why start here. What's this about? Why will provide a good foundational knowledge for you? One thing I like to use that I won't go into too much specifics only because I feel like it's a little bit more well-known would be the New York Times book section and the book review itself, which is always a good mix of what's coming out in the next week, but then the next month or so, they'll have all of those articles, which is good because I often don't know like what are the major titles coming out soon. And so many times I'll find out an author I like has a book coming out next month and I'll be like, okay, I might not have actually known that. But then it's a good mix of that with interviews with authors and career retrospectives, which is really good because they'll do stuff like that as well as focus on older titles as well. It's good to have that mix of what's coming out now, but also a really a focus on I guess it would be the classics, but they write articles on them purposely because they haven't been established as classics. They're not as well known. And they kind of want to say, hey, this deserves more attention for this reason. So when they do stuff like that, I I find it really worthwhile to check out. Absolutely. Beyond that, so at the library, we have a similar tool for maybe a little bit more in depth for books that are being released in the next month or so is the book page magazine. We have that at the library. It's usually on a shelf in our new fiction section. You can also ask at the reference desk. We usually keep copies there as well. But they have amazing interviews with authors who have new titles coming out. They'll get like bestsellers. I know Colson Whitehead was on there when his most recent book came out. Yeah, really in-depth interviews about the author's backstory, why they wanted to write this book, and what the book means to them. So it's always a good read to find if you're into that author, but often that author will discuss so many authors that are meaningful to them, and then it's kind of this ricochet effect of finding new new authors you might like. A more esoteric way of finding new books is if you belong to any specific like forum that maybe isn't entirely focused on the literature, but it has just general discussion forums. And you're probably in that place because you found a like-minded community, that kind of thing. So for that reason, I found at these kind of places, the book recommendation threads are always right up my alley because, well, it's a hive mind to some extent. We're there because we like to talk to each other. So if you do belong to anything like that, I would definitely recommend starting a book recommendation thread or seeing if that one exists already. And then the last tool I would say is Goodreads. If anybody doesn't use Goodreads, it is a literature social media website. So you could put on there what you've read, give it a star rating one to five, put on there what you want to read, which I find probably the most helpful aspect of the website because I can't remember more than one book I want to read at a time. So I think that's great. You could browse book lists, user reviews of existing titles. And that's really where it comes in handy for me for finding new books. I'll read some user reviews of titles I already know I like, and I'll click on whoever left the user review. I'll click on their profile and I'll see what some of their other favorite books are. So I'm like, well, If we think so similarly about this title already, we might have other things in common as well in other literary tastes. I'll also use Goodreads. They have a lot of great book lists that are already on there. Again, generated by people who are just using the website. So when I make book displays at the library for things like Band Books Week or Earth Day, I'll consult these lists because people have compiled lists that are hundreds of books along already. I'm like, this is truly an amazing work of dedication just to one specific project. So seeing the amount of care people put into these kind of things, it's really amazing. I find it has this effect on me as well, where it's like, oh, well, this is maintaining my interest in these things too, because I see how much somebody else cares about it. But yeah, definitely check out all of those different ways of finding new books. 
let me know if you have some other ways that you like to find new books. Yeah, everybody's different. I, that's what I find. You know, everybody has their own methods. And again, these uh, probably the next few years, these won't be the same methods as well. They'll probably be changing. It's just a fluid thing. So next episode, I promise we'll get back to actually talk about the books. I just figured we've been doing this so long that, you know, why not mix it up for a little bit? You can listen to the EBPL podcast at ebpl.org backslash podcast. Thanks to Melissa Hosek for editing this episode. Thank you for listening. <laughs>